I was going through my models looking for an assembly to use in one of my videos and I came across this one. I decided not to use it, but there was a sub assembly that caught my eye. It was this one over here. Let me open it up in its own separate window. And I saw this and I thought, hey, you know, this looks like a pretty neat mechanism to play around with, but it is assembled with regular constraints. They don't have that glyph with the dot inside of a box. And so I thought, hey, let me convert this into a mechanism. And I stumbled through it. I made a whole bunch of different mistakes and I realized this could be a good learning experience. So how would I turn this into an actual working mechanism? Well, let's take a look at the different components. Okay, this is the base component. It is fully constrained. And I know that because there are no symbols next to it in the model tree. And there is a bearing over here, and then there's a bearing over here. And then we have one of those components with the glyph indicating that it is under constraint. So I'm going to click edit definition from the mini toolbar and it has a coincident constraint. Hold on, let me get this back in the middle of the screen. It has a coincident constraint and then this coincident constraint for a couple of planes. There we have a couple of different axes. So the easiest thing to do is try clicking on this icon in the dashboard and this worked. It converted it to a pin connection with one rotational degree of freedom. That's good, let's hit the check mark for that and then go to the next component. Okay, it is a pin, let me edit definition, and it is under constrained. Let's try just hitting the button again, and we get a pin connection, that's good. And then we go to the next one, edit definition, and once again, we'll just try, try clicking on the convert button. We get a pin, that's good. So far, so good, it's just working very well. All right, then I will edit definition of the green component. And so we have a coincident constraint with a couple of cylindrical surfaces. Then we have a parallel constraint. Well, that parallel constraint, that's going to keep it from moving. And then we have this distance one. Hey, let's get rid of the parallel. I will delete that one. And then we'll try the convert button. We get a pin connection. I'll hit the check mark. Then when I went to the next three links here in the model tree, this is where I made a mistake. I'll hit the edit definition button and I took a look and saw, okay, we've got a coincident and then a coincident between those two holes and then the distance over here. And I thought, yeah, that's fine. You know, if I move the first green component, it's going to move the other one. So I left it as is. And the problem is, let me use the insert here. I'm gonna drag up to show you what happens. If you want to get into mechanism mode later on, it's gonna give you a warning that the highlighted connections are not defined between two rigid bodies. If you continue, they will be suppressed. So that's not good, so I'm gonna cancel out of there. So let's go and fix these to the way that they should be. I will edit definition. And let's see, it's this coincident constraint. We don't want that one. So I'm going to delete it and then hit the convert button and hit the check mark. And then let's go to edit definition. And let's see, this one has a coincident up there. We have a distance that is offsetting it from the surface. And then we have the coincident between the two uh, similar links. So let's delete that coincident. Once again, convert, and we get a pin connection that is good. And then I will edit definition of the other one. And same, we'll get rid of that additional coincident constraint. We'll hit the convert button and the check mark. And now when I go into applications mechanism, hey, we didn't get an error about highlighted connections and rigid bodies. Okay, let me get out of mechanism mode and let me also get out of insert mode. I just right click on the green bar and then choose exit insert mode. So now we're down to the retainer over here. All right, so let's edit definition of that one. And we have a coincident constraint and a distance of zero. It is under constrained, I'll try clicking on the convert button. And this time it ended up giving me a general connection, 
which I don't want. So let me delete that one. I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it manually as a pin connection. So for the pin connection, let's select this cylindrical surface. And I'm going to query select to the cylindrical surface on the inside there. And then for translation, I'll use this big flat surface. And then I will query select to the surface on that component. It is good. So let's hit the check mark and go on down to the next component. I'm going to edit definition. This one will once again give me a general connection if I try to do that. So I'm just going to manually delete the constraints and then choose pin over here and cylindrical surface. Let me query select to cylindrical surface and then big flat surface. Query select to the flat surface in the retainer. That's good. I will middle mouse button. So, so far, so good. I'm just rolling along. All right, now we have the rod end. Let's edit definition of that one. And so, let me move it to the center of the screen. Here we have the allow assumptions. If I turn that off, it's going to allow it to rotate, and I'll try hitting on the convert button. This time it ended up giving me a weird planar connection because of the references. It's choosing that flat surface over there. So I'm going to get rid of this. It really should be assembled to the green component rather than that one over there. So let's delete that. And let's see for the cylinder connection. Can I just change this to a pin? Yep. And I will define for translation. There really should be an offset distance. I remember from the other component that the value is going to be 0.31. So let's select that and that surface. It ends up changing it to zero because of uh, the configuration option about when, at what distance should it consider coincident. Well, it automatically went to zero in that case. But anyhow, that's good. But I do need to add a, another connection here. I need to add it between the green link on the other side. So I'll choose new set. And in this case, I can just, just use a cylinder. So let's do that surface and query select to a cylindrical surface in the green link. So that is good. I will hit the check mark. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Edit definition. And let's delete, delete. We'll do a pin connection and cylindrical surface. Query select to the cylindrical surface, and then this surface and this surface. Change it to a distance. And let's try just typing in 0.31. That's good. And then let's connect it to the other green link with a cylinder connection. I hope I'm not going too fast. Query select, get that surface over there, hit the check mark. So now we are good. Now we have this rod lift component. Let's edit definition of this one. And it's got this distance between the flat surfaces. And it's also got this coincident constraint between the retainer. Well, it really should have a coincident constraint first to this one over here. So let's remove that reference and then change it to this surface here. You notice that the location adjusted a tiny bit. It is under constraint, so I will click on the convert button. And once again, we get this general connection, but there really isn't like a pin connection or a slider connection that it sh should correspond to. So I'm just going to leave it as a general connection in this particular case. But we also need to add a connection between that rod lift and the retainer down here at the bottom. So let's do new set once again, but this one is going to be a cylinder connection. And I'll just pick the cylindrical surfaces and that is good. And I'll hit the check mark for that one. And let's do it for the other one at the end. We're almost at the end. Let's hit edit definition and let's see. Oh yeah, let's change that coincident constraint, we want to get it away from the retainer and back to this rod end up over here. 
And then I'll try the convert button. Once again, we get a general connection. That is fine. And let's do new set, cylinder connection, and pick that surface and that surface over there. So that is good. I will hit the check mark. And so now everything should work as a mechanism. So at this point, I hit the drag button and grab it. And well, the problem is it goes all the way. It's not doing it right. Let me hit the middle mouse button. And so we're getting interference. Right now, there's like 360 degrees of rotation. That's not what we want. And so how do we get this to stop the way that it should? Well, there are a couple different ways that we can do it. Let me hit the snapshot in case I want to go back to this particular arrangement later on. Always good to take a snapshot if things get messed up. One way that we could do it is by our component settings. So for example, we have the rod lift. I'm going to edit definition. It has that cylinder connection. I'll scroll down in the list here. We can set limits on the translation. So I'll choose translation axis and we'll define between this surface here and that surface over there. And right now it's a negative value. You can see as I drag it, oops, let me go back to the translation axis there. It can go negative, but it should have a maximum value of zero. So I will just check the box here for maximum limit, change that to a zero and hit the enter button and hit the check mark for that. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Edit definition. Let's go to the cylinder connection and the translation axis and pick that surface and that surface and we'll enable a maximum value of zero. And I will hit the check mark. And so now when I try dragging this, let's go to drag components. I'll grab this and it does have it does stop there. You know, if I move my mouse up, it's not moving anymore, but we're still getting interpenetration. Oops, ended up passing completely through and messing up my arrangement of components. Good thing I had the snapshot there if I needed it. But anyhow, how can we get this from stopping when it hits the bottom? Well, I tried a few different things that didn't work. I went to applications mechanism. I tried using 3D contacts. Uh, I won't show you how that didn't work. I tried using cams, that didn't work. But then what you can actually do is set your model properties to stop at collision. If you go to file and then prepare model properties, now that I'm in mechanism mode, you'll notice that this information is not available for almost everything in here, except for collision detection. And right now by default it is set to no detection. You can click on the blue change hyperlink and change the model from no collision detection to global collision detection if you want. And I have a config option turned on called Enable Advanced Collision, gives a bunch of additional options down here. And one of the additional options is stop when colliding. You could also highlight the interfering volumes or push objects upon collision, but I want it to stop when colliding. And I'll show you global collision detec detection. Uh, I'm usually wary of using that because it can really slow things down when you are trying to do a drag. You can see that we're getting the little spinning over there and here we get, okay, it stops there, stops there. But uh, so there we're getting it to not collide when I am dragging it around because of that global collision detection. Now, one thing I recommend that you do, especially if you are in a really big assembly, you want, might want to change that just to partial. And you might want to figure out, hey, what components are going to end up colliding? So for example, I will go back to file prepare and model properties and scroll down to collision detection, hit the change button. You can try a partial collision detection. And so I can say, okay, maybe it's when this component runs into the retainer and then I'll choose the OK button and close out of here and then try dragging and I'll grab this and 
yep, that works there in that particular situation. Once those two things hit one another, it's going to end up stopping. Oops. Uh, so that's how you can do it. Or maybe you might, end, and you might end up picking this component, and that component over there, but let me just drag it again. But here now we are getting the motion that we want that represents how this should be moving. So that is good. I'll hit the close button. And in that way, I've taken this assembly that just had some regular constraints and made it a mechanism with connections.